Now, a bit later in the program, we'll be speaking to the Australian Sophie Ellsworth about the ABC's disgraceful coverage of the coronation. It was nothing short of a woke bin fire of self-loathing, throwing not red meat but tofu to an inner city audience of Twitter addicts with pronouns in their profiles. Now, it has often been said that the ABC, the national broadcaster for which you and I pay somewhere north of a billion dollars a year for, is a staff-run collective. Well, if you need any further proof of that fact, think about this. A few weeks ago, Stan Grant had a very public temper tantrum about the ABC's respectful coverage of the death of Queen Elizabeth. All the better to move copies, I would suspect, of his book, The Queen is Dead. Now, to hear Grant tell it, the fact that the ABC didn't go the full Lydia Thorpe and enter into a fortnight of anti-monarchism and empire kicking was, in his words, quote, a betrayal. So what did ABC do about Stan Grant's behavior? Well, they rewarded him. They put the Q&A presenter on a panel before the King's coronation to run down the event, Great Britain, and indeed modern post-settlement Australia, which is arguably the most successful multicultural experiment in modern history. There, Grant was joined by a number of other panelists to talk about just how awful the coronation was, how terrible Great Britain is not diverse enough, and how Australia must pick over the scabs of history to win his and the ABC's approval. Australian Republican Movement co-chair Craig Foster joined him, saying the crown was, quote, at the heart of the wound in this nation. Not to be outdone, Indigenous lawyer Teela Reid suggested that to achieve reconciliation, we empty the prisons. Seriously. Of course, all this is historically illiterate and juvenile of a piece with a first-year undergraduate coming home loaded with lefty talking points determined to ruin Christmas dinner. <laughs> oh, the British evil was empire. Woe is us! It is Australia's original sin. We must cut ties immediately and become a republic. All hell our Presidente Peter Fitzsimons! Nonsense. I mean, first of all, any honest reading of the history of the last century or so will confirm that we are all indigenous, Anglo or immigrant alike, surely doing better in Australia than if, say, the French had Britain, the Brit, beaten the British to these shores. Not only that, Great Britain, a nation that has supposedly not come to terms with race and empire, has a Hindu prime minister whose family is from India and a foreign minister whose family hails from Sierra Leone. But none of this counts because for the left, the grievance is the thing. It's a grievance that is the source of the left's power, the endless push to remake a society they see as fatally flawed and remake it in their own revolutionary image. And I hope that as I sit in tonight for Chris, who is a staunch voice supporter, as you would know, well, I hope you won't mind me saying that that revolutionary attitude is the same problem that sits at the heart of the push for an Aboriginal voice to Parliament as well as the entire Uluru statement, which not only calls for a new representative body to talk to Parliament and the bureaucracy, but also treaty and makarata, or truth-telling, which is, of course, not so thinly-veiled code for endlessly picking over the wounds of the past. This is, I'm sorry, no recipe for peace, for harmony, for prosperity. Just the opposite. Look at the United States, where I come from. Their race relations have been getting steadily better for decades. Until in the last five or ten years, they started to get a whole lot worse, egged on in no small part by radical activists and the likes of the Black Lives Matter movement. In California, a reparation task force, one of many operating across the country, has approved payments of up to $1.2 million for every African-American resident. Of course, that's not enough for the activists, some of whom now say that the bill should be as high as, who knows, $200 million per. This is absurdity. I don't think Anthony Albanese's, quote, polite, unquote, request for a voice to Parliament will stop there if it's achieved. If the yes vote gets up, reparations, race-based seats in the Senate, and sovereignty will be the next set of demands. Just you watch. But there is another reason why giving official weight to grievance-mongering is a bad idea, and it is this. 
Successful societies can acknowledge the past without picking over it endlessly, looking to put the thumb on the scale one way or the other in the name of equity. Because if you think about it, cultures are a lot like people. We all have pain in our past, but it is those who deal with it and move on, forgiving and yes, even forgetting, who tend to be the happiest and best off.